fire upon it, well, then we know that that God is the real deal. You go first. What? Your God isn't listening to you? Or maybe you need to pray harder. Maybe you need to cry louder. Maybe Baal is off in the bathroom. And who says the Bible doesn't have bathroom humor? If you were mocking them today, you'd probably say, oh, maybe Baal's got his phone on uh, do not disturb, or maybe his internet is down. But after half a day of this carrying on and nonsense, there was no fire. There was no voice. And they even started to cut themselves. Ew, gross. But even all this blood won't get his attention. There was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Well, now it was Elijah's turn. He says, let's make this interesting. I want you to dump a bunch of water on my altar. No, wait. Dig some trenches around it so we can even surround it with water. Douse it good. Not once, not twice, but three times. And then Elijah stood and prayed. And the fire from heaven fell. And it was no mediocre fire. It was Texas hot fire. <laughs> you people from Wisconsin will learn this soon. The fire was so hot it burned the wool, the wood, the water, and the very stone melted. Do you know you need fire about 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit to melt uh, stone? This Yahweh means business. And so you can say that Elijah proved his point, or rather that Yahweh did. And Elijah took those 450 false prophets and had them executed which made Jezebel put out a price on his head, but that is another story. So what do we make of this dramatic contest, this smackdown at Mount Carmel? What does it have to do with you? And what does it have to do with Jesus for you? Well, where do you stand? Perhaps you can see yourself standing in the audience, looking on. One of those curious onlookers waiting to see just how this would all go down. Now, you're not watching Baal versus Yahweh, but the contest today is between Yahweh and, well, lots of other things. You probably even have your own personal little Baals. Worldviews, ideas, lifestyles opposed to God, vying for your attention and your loyalty and even your participation. Will this contest end with you in the camp of the true faith? Or will the false prophets of this world convince you with their gesticulations and their persuasions? Or maybe they already have. Don't be a human ping pong ball, back and forth between the truth and lies. Stop limping around and stand. Repent. Turn away from all of that. Look to Christ, to Yahweh, and live. And God does exactly what he says he will do. He keeps his promises. Now, don't get me wrong. God has not promised to send down fire from heaven whenever and wherever you want. Knowing some of you, this would cause major problems anyway. But he has promised to send down his forgiveness on you just as gratuitously and even more. His grace in Jesus Christ melts away even all your sins. His baptismal waters power wash away every spot and stain. And there is nothing left. This is no halfway, strings attached, mealy-mouthed, mamby-pamby, all-for-show, sissy-pants forgiveness. This is a full throttle, take-no-prisoners, supersized, punch in the gut, for all the marbles, complete annihilation of sins kind of forgiveness. God does not mess around. And where is Jesus in all of this? He is the Elijah that prays on our behalf. Where is Jesus? He's the sacrifice on the altar who is himself consumed so that the fires of hell cannot touch you and me. 
Where is Jesus? He is the one who shed his own blood. And unlike those loser prophets, with Jesus' blood, someone listened. Someone answered. Someone paid attention. God the Father answered and accepted the sacrifice of the cross, and he showed it by raising his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. And so, Jesus wins. And this is how it stands. You know the score. Sin, death, and the devil, zip. Fail, nothing, nada. Yahweh, everything, forever. Jesus wins it all. And most importantly, he wins you. Not just now, but forever. That I may be his own, and that you may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. This is most certainly true. This is how it stands. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.